Hello! The last video on this channel is entitled Taking a Break, in which I discuss how I will be taking a break. I am no longer taking a break as that break is over, so I'm done taking a break. I'd like to talk about the goals that I have for 2021 and what you can expect from BPS.Space this year, and then in the second half of the video we'll talk about some more personal stuff and sort of what I did to get out of the funk I was in. It's been about six weeks since I put all the work down, and you might be able to see in the shot there uh, the rocket cave is open again. I am working on rockets and feeling pretty good about it. One of the things I thought about during the downtime while I wasn't working was why I want to do this stuff and like what interests me. For a long time that goal was landing a model rocket uh, propulsively and it's what Scout E has almost done. I don't mean to sound too full of myself but I do think it's going to happen sooner rather than later. One of these days by luck or otherwise it's gonna happen and that goal will have been met. That goal was really lofty for me when I set it back in 2015, and I need another lofty goal to work towards. It's like the dog that catches the garbage truck. Like, you get the garbage truck, and now what? So we need a goal that's beyond the 30 meter launch and landing that Scout does, and in thinking about what's currently beyond my capability, um, but is definitely higher than 30 meters, what about space? It's a little wild, but I think it's within my capability. Not now, like I couldn't do it right now, but I think I can lead a test program that pushes me up to that point of doing a space shot. We're talking about suborbital space, uh, anything above 100 kilometers, the true Kármán line. Very little of that has been designed so far. Roughly speaking, I'm looking at a two-stage design and uh, passive control all the way up, except for perhaps the roll axis. Don't get your hopes up for that happening anytime soon. There's a lot of steps that we need to take in between now and when that happens, but we've needed a new goal for a while. When people ask, what are you gonna do? Like, what do you wanna be doing in five years? I want to have that capability under my belt. Um, that is a great stepping stone to doing even larger things. So the next thing is space and, uh, you know, two years, three years, we'll see. While thinking about what I wanted to change about how I work, I realized I kind of hate working alone. Uh, it's really fun to work alone for some period of time when you have full control over everything. And at some point, it just is grating. I mean, it just sucks. When things fail, no one truly, like viscerally understands the, the feeling of that failure because of the investment that only you put into it. And it's the same when things succeed. You have no one you can truly share that same feeling with. The last time I worked on an engineering team was when I was on the open loop team uh, in the SpaceX Hyperloop competition a few years ago. And I have been trying to chase that feeling for a long time. <laughs> this is all to say it's time to hire people. Uh, don't submit any resumes just yet, um, but towards the end of 2021, um, I should be set up to hire someone full time uh, to work at bps.space. And in the meantime, bet between now and the end of the year, I'm gonna be looking at doing uh, probably two, maybe three um, small internships uh, for people who want to help out in the meantime, and it lets me get a little bit more experience working with people, uh, both remote and in person. When I'm ready to, to take that leap onto the first internship, um, I'll let you all know here, and uh, we'll, we'll do like proper interviews and things like that. But nothing quite yet, just sort of letting you know that's on the radar. Logistically, for both of these things, the space shot and the hiring, um, I will need to not be in Nashville, Tennessee. So coming up this year as well is a move to Southern California. Um, there are a few places that are better than, generally speaking, that area uh, for aerospace, both amateur aerospace and professional. For the last few moves that I've made, a big consideration has been what if BPS stops working and there's no place for me to better fall back on than this big aerospace hub of Los Angeles. And in terms of the space shot, uh, there are like deserts all over the place and a couple of different standing waivers that I can go work within. In terms of other projects this year, Scout E is absolutely still happening. We're still pursuing the launch and landing stuff. Um, the air launch stuff has been <laughs> so hard, like so hard in the stupidest ways, uh, but air launch is still happening. It's just slow and stupid. Um, and then maybe like one or two other tiny projects, but one of the things that I really want to do this year is make good on my like perpetual promise that we're going to scale up soon. So let me show you what I did. Um, it's <laughs> okay. Hold on, just, just for, hold on. 
Okay, so here's the deal, pals. Okay, hold on. All right, look, here we go. So this is Scout, right? This is Scout, tiny little rocket. Here's Sprint. This is sort of the, the hollow bones of Sprint. The nose cone is a little like twisted. And let me get a couple other props, hold on. This is an F, <laughs> where am I? This is an F-15 rocket motor. You can see the, the size of it here. Not that big, right? About the size of like a finger-ish. Okay, that's a low power motor. Here is what's considered a class one motor. This, I think this is, um, actually this really shouldn't be loaded. This is probably not a good idea to fire at this point. It's been loaded for like two years. This is an I-175 by Cesaroni. It's a reloadable rocket motor, um, 38 millimeters in diameter, and you know, like a forearm in length, not that bad. This is a, this one is not loaded, like it should be. Uh, this is, this would hold the J270 that flew thrusty McThrust face, the L2 also 38 millimeters in diameter, a little more than an arm in length. Let me ask you a question. So there's level one, level two, and level three rockets. How big do you think the level three motor is? Here's the level one, here's the level two. How big is the level three? So when I talk about going higher and faster and doing more complicated flights this year, allow me to demonstrate what I am talking about. This is the level three motor. What I'm trying to illustrate here is that we're really, we're, we're starting to push things higher and faster this year. And now I need to fix my desk, hold on. Okay. So the elephant in the room is how do you afford all of this stuff? Uh, hiring people and this, <laughs> the L3 is like $4,500 in. Uh, so what's, what's going on? The first answer is that there are a lot of people who are very generously donating um, a little bit of money every month over on Patreon in order for them to get access to a couple of rewards and to support the project. That's been a great thing. I've been saving up money just a little bit every month um, to try and offset some of these costs. The other thing that I'm gonna do is we're gonna start taking on some more sponsorships on the channel. Obviously, the one that I did with MathWorks this fall is an incredible fit, but what I'm talking about is companies that are a little bit more adjacent, so audiobook stuff, website companies, things like that. These allow us to get to the space shot a lot faster and um, a lot less sketchily, which like sketchy things are fun until you're dealing with that much uh, explosive propellant. <laughs> I know this is a very common thing on YouTube at this point, but I wanted to give you a heads up before that happens. If you see some sponsorships, every time just think like this is gonna push us closer to space. Another way to fund these things, we're gonna keep adding to the merch store. Um, so we have some shirts. I really should have planned this better and worn my own shirt. Uh, but we've got shirts and hats and sweatshirts and all sorts of things. We're gonna add some more things soon as well. Um, and I think that's all for the funding stuff. So that's what we're looking at in 2021. I didn't talk too much about the high power stuff, but the level three is coming up this spring and we're gonna aim to do a few more flights that are ultra high power like that. Um, you know, talking a couple kilometers at least in altitude. Um, there are some fun opportunities to do two-stage stuff and active control as well. Um, and I feel like I have enough grounding in my active control knowledge to, to feel confident, you know, getting that mostly right on the first shot. That's a pretty dangerous attitude, but I do, I feel a lot more confident than I did last year. And thus concludes the what's coming up for BPS space as a business this year portion of this video. My words are getting worse as the video goes on. So I wanna talk a little bit about the personal side of what I went through, why I decided to stop working, and then what has worked for me so far, I'm still pretty early on, but what has worked for me to, to get back on my feet. So in terms of the symptoms that uh, I started to feel before I burned out, um, like ways to detect that this is coming, um, it was really weird. Like I ended up getting angry at everything. I would get very frustrated and like my fuse got really short. Um, even when I was hitting the deadlines I wanted to be hitting, it was never good enough. Um, and I have this like sort of imposter syndrome complex, which makes that all worse because you just spend all of your time working to try and compensate for that. But anger, irritability, um, I wrote down anxious here as well. Um, honestly, it was, it, it, 
it would be hard to detect in the future if you were just going off of those symptoms. Like in hindsight, I can always look at periods of my life and say, I was overworking at this point, or I was pushing too hard at this point. Um, but it's, it's really difficult to detect that in the short term or in the real time term. So um, something that um, a few people suggested was that I should assign activities that represent my mental health and you know physical health is connected, so that, that makes sense too. But activities that represent my health in general, um, that if I cannot make an excuse to do them, then something is probably off. So far, that has seemed to work. So what I've done, and this is just what works for me, and again, I'm only like six weeks into this, so you take what I say with a grain of salt, but um, what I have been doing is assigning the activities of exercise. So that was running for a little bit, and then I messed up my foot, and now it's biking, um, and journaling. Um, this has been the biggest deal for me. I bought this little $11 journal at CVS, and uh, the only rules, I wrote it on page one, the only rule is that, uh, here we go, there are no rules for this journal I will write as often as possible with no requirement on quantity, quantity or topic. And that's the whole deal. In the past, I have written myself a journal um, where I've said, I'm gonna write every day, or I'm gonna write a page every time I write, or I'm going to always write about X, Y, Z. And that never works. Um, anytime I put constraints on something like that, uh, I end up making it a chore and I can just sit down and word vomit into this book and weirdly it like clears up my head. Uh, that has seemed to work really well. And then the exercise thing is just if you're not in a mental headspace to put aside 15 to 20 minutes per day or 15 to 20 minutes three times a week, um, you know, you're probably pushing too hard. Um, that's sort of like a secondary detector. Someone put it as like a canary in a coal mine. Coal mine. Um, a secondary detector of that my mental health is not doing well. I actually felt like I was ready to get back to work um, a few weeks ago, <laughs> like not that long of a break. And I, I held myself back for a little while uh, before I really felt like I just need to start working again. Um, and so far, these activities have worked well, and I can already correlate a few times during the last week or two uh, where I've missed a few days or whatever, and that correlates really well with um, like pushing too hard on a project or something. I also had not been doing anything other than work during the day, and picking up a few hobbies made a really big difference for me. Um, if you don't have anything to do after your work is done, because your work is your hobby, that ends up predictably becoming an issue. So I've been propagating my plants. This little clipping is a golden pothos and it's actually a clipping from this guy back here. He needs a name. He's been thriving. He loves sitting on the, the kitchen table, um, although right now he's on my desk. And the little rod that stands him up uh, was supposed to be a landing leg, but it got cut to the wrong dimension. <laughs> I've also been writing a bunch of music. I'm putting together like a tiny instrumental album of BPS music. Um, a lot of which you have not heard and some of which you might have heard. Um, people have been asking for me to release the music that I put in my videos for a long time and it felt like a great time to double down on a creative passion. There's a bunch of tiny things I did as well to like separate out my workspaces and my like relaxation spaces as well. That gets really hard to do if you're in a tiny space or if you have a lot of stuff. Um, but that did make a big difference, trying to separate all of the stuff that was rocket related into the rocket room and closing that door for a little while. Anyway, I think that's all I have for you today. It's certainly a different video, um, but there will be a rocket related video coming out next week and hopefully the week after or maybe the week after that. Um, looking at, I'm, I don't know, kind of a regular upload schedule. We'll see. Um, always dangerous to promise that stuff, so we'll see. Thank you very much for watching. I appreciate you hanging out during this break. Um, it wasn't as long as I thought it would be. Thankfully, it didn't end up taking that long for me to get things back to normal in my head uh, and feel like I have some techniques to deal with this stuff in the future. Um, but I appreciate that so many of you responded through email, through messages, through Twitter, YouTube comments, um, all of the ways that you can reach me. I got so much support from people who said, take as much time as you need, even if it's a year or two or whatever. Um, and it makes a really big difference to, to know that, that you folks are there to, to support me, even if I make stupid decisions about how hard I work. So we're gonna try to not do this again. 
Thank you very much for watching. May your skies be blue and your winds be low.